campaigning for Democratic Senate candidate John Tester in Montana. The upcoming election isn't the first time matters of faith have been kicked around as a political football, but some wonder whether conservative Christians are ready to kick back. Does anyone own the evangelical vote? Roy Heron is the state senator from Tennessee and head of a group called FaithfulDemocrats.com. He is in Nashville. He's joining us from there. And from Washington, D.C., Richard Land. He's with the Southern Baptist Convention, where he's president of the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission. Let me ask you, uh, Mr. Land, how, who owns the evangelical vote? Does anyone own? Because it seems like Republicans have uh, taken ownership of that vote. At well, hopefully, the of elections. hopefully only God owns the evangelical <laughs> vote. Uh, our ultimate allegiance belongs to God Almighty, and uh, we encourage Christians of every denomination to be registered to vote and to be an informed voter and to vote their values, to vote their beliefs, and to vote their convictions. And we don't believe that uh, ministers and churches should be endorsing candidates, but we should be looking for candidates who endorse us, who endorse our values, who endorse our beliefs, who endorse our convictions. So. Hopefully no one owns the evangelical vote but the Lord himself. It does seem, though, that, as I said, Republicans seem to have taken ownership of that, of the evangelical vote. Um, and, and evangelicals turned out in record numbers the last presidential election, and people have been counting on that vote. Mr. Heron, do you believe that God only owns that vote, or do you think that the Republican Party still has a chance with the evangelicals? I agree with exactly what Brother Land said. I think that is what the, the gospel requires. I think that's what the Bible teaches. I think that's what God asks. Uh, the, the church is called to be the bride of Christ, not the prostitute of any political party. On that we agree. Where I think I might differ is that uh, too, in too many churches, pastors have preached from the pulpit and Sunday school teachers have taught in their classrooms that if you're a Democrat, uh, you can't be a Christian, and if you're a Christian, you can't be a Democrat. Uh, too many are trying to say that God has spelled GOP. I think what's going on in this country right now is uh, American Christians are having a Damascus Road experience. I think with what the revelations uh, with Congressman Foley and the Republican uh, Republican leadership being more concerned about protecting their power than uh, uh, prosecuting uh, a, a pedophile or protecting pages. I think the American people are getting their eyes open. I think Christians are looking again. And I think you take the recent revelations from the White House, and what we're seeing is that people are seeing again uh, exactly what Brother Land has described, that they are not to be uh, any, any party's tool. Mr. Heron, let, let's talk about that, because even before the Foley scandal, there was a portion of the white evangelicals that said that they had a favorable impression of the Republican Party, but that favorable impression had fallen sharply from 63% to 54%. That's according to a Pew poll. Why do you think that is? I think the corruption that's seen in Washington, it may not be A to Z, but it's at least A to W, from Abram Hoff to... Uh, uh, right down to the W's White House, uh, I think that corruption, which uh, is endemic in Washington, Mr. is Heron, part of what's I going to, on. I have to uh, interrupt both of you right here. We're going to continue this in a second, but we have some breaking news we want to report. Karen? We're actually getting word of some possible threats to NFL stadiums. Uh, Homeland Security correspondent Gene Missouri has been working this for us. Gene, what do you know? At this convention, and then Roy Heron is a state senator from Tennessee. They both join us now. Mr. Heron, you were speaking. Do you remember what you were talking about? I asked you about the Pew poll that shows that confidence, at least in the Republican Party, uh, is down from evangelicals. And you pointed out that it, it had been falling even before the Foley scandal right. broke, and I think that's exactly right. What's taken place, though, is you've had a, a series of scandals. If it's not A to Z, it's at least A to W, from Abram Off right through the, the W's White House. And, and you've had scandal after scandal, and I think Christian people are saying, enough, one party government, a monarchy, is not what we want. We're ready for change. And In fact, on that, a book has been written about that, the David Quo's book uh, saying, that Republicans, at least inside the administration, were mocking evangelicals and basically um, using their vote. He was on American Morning, our American Morning show, I think it was yesterday. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. I think that it's important for Christians to understand. They have given, been given this image of George W. Bush as sort of the pastor-in-chief. Right? But I think what Christians need to do is to look at President Bush and to be able to say and look at him through the same political eyes that the White House looks at them and to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to make certain objective criticisms, or I'm going to make certain objective statements. Mr. Lamb, what do you have to say about that? Do you think that maybe the Republicans in some way are taking the evangelical vote because they've had it, taking it for granted? Well, I think some Republicans are, but that same Pew poll that you quoted showed that 54% um, of uh, evangelicals have a favorable opinion of the Republican Party, and 27% think the Democratic Party is friendly to religion. So the Democrats have more wood to chop than Republicans do, and 
You know, I know David Quo, and, and I'm a little confused because when David was in the White House, when he left the White House, he wrote the president a glowing letter, which was quoted by uh, Tony Snow, in which he said that he, he was inspired by the president's leadership and that they'd done great things in the faith-based office. And Let now when he's this. trying to sell a book, he's saying something different. But I can tell you this, I've dealt with this White House. And, uh, you know, Chief Justice Roberts, uh, Associate go, Justice Alito, those are important issues. And I, I want to say this. God is not a Democrat and God is not a Republican, but God is pro-life. But do you think that this will keep people home or at least make Republicans who may have voted Republican, you think that will make them vote for Democrats? I think, I think it depends entirely on which race you're talking about. You're going to see an enormous fluctuation in turnout among evangelicals depending on the candidate in the race. The only person who can deliver evangelical votes to a candidate, Democrat or Republican, is the candidate himself or herself. And it will depend on whether or not the candidate can convince evangelicals, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, that they support their values, their beliefs, and their convictions. They're going to vote their values, their beliefs, and their convictions. I've, and I've got to cut you off right here because we have to run. We're running out of time. But I want to ask both, both of you this, especially people who are in my age group and maybe a little bit younger, are asking, why this Democrat, why the Republican, why the labels? Do you think that the world, especially the U.S., and people are more complex than we, we might think, why do we have to have labels? Have we evolved beyond a Democrat or a two-party system and people just vote on their issues and on their values and on their convictions? I don't think we've moved beyond parties. I think the parties are in, in flux and changing and will continue to do so. We have a, a, a system of government that is very biased towards a two-party system. And uh, so we'll continue to see the two parties. The parties are different than they were when I was your age. The parties were very different than they are today. And the parties will continue to evolve as Americans have a, a vigorous and, and forthright debate about which direction they want the country to go. And both parties will seek to make the case that will convince the most Americans. And that's healthy for the country. Mr. Heron, I'll give you the last word on this. I think you're going to see more Democrats, uh, more, more Christians voting Democratic this fall because they realize that when Jesus came and, and Luke 4 proclaimed that uh, good news to the poor, uh, he didn't proclaim uh, multi-million dollar tax cuts to the, to the billionaires. He didn't proclaim piling billions and trillions of dollars of debt on our children. Uh, he came to proclaim good news to the poor. In my Senate district, in the last uh, six years during this administration, we've had 29 plants either closed or have mass layoffs. Thousands of people have lost their jobs. Thousands of people have lost their health insurance. And there are thousands of people working in my district and across this state and across this country who are making 5 15 an hour and barely more than that. And the minimum wage is worth about 60% of what it was the last time it was adjusted. Roy I think Heron. people are, are going to make a difference this year. State Senator Roy Heron from Tennessee, thank you very much for that. Even though I gave you the last word, I, I could see Richard Lane.